Hello and welcome to Retro Computadores. Sorry I am, I'm wearing this weekend clothes. This is the third time I'm recording this. The first time the camera was out of focus and the second time it was too much noise at the background. But I want to talk about this device, this 3D printed device, this Commodore 6, 6, C64 with a fully functional keyboard. It was 3D printed on a MakerBot Z18 and I had to disassemble, reassemble of a keyboard. I want Chinese a regular keyboard to put it inside. So we're gonna show how this was made. This video also received a second uh, objective. Uh, from December 15th, I just know that Chuck Pedro, the creator of the chip 6502, has passed. So this video is also an homenage to the creator of this great chip used on Nintendo, Atari, Apple II, well, heck, even Bender had a 6502 on his head. So, check pedal, Godspeed, wherever you are, rest in peace, thank you for your remarkable work and your great contribution for humanity to go on and the, our revolution on personal computers. Let's jump in and see how I made it. So first I have to, I started with this Chinese keyboard, my Max, something like that. I have to disassemble it. So uh, the plan was to use the keys and make a demi mockup. Just put the keys in there. But when I opened, I realized I could do a little bit more. It was a hard work because these guys really like to screw things up, right? Uh, inside I found out a, a membrane thing to use it to, with the keys. And this kind of silicon resort, silicon coins that sprinkle back the keys. I just learned that this membrane is very propense, very easy to ox oxide and lo lost contact. And the keys are also very simple made. I think that's how we do cheaper keyboards nowadays, right? At least this is just perfect to be used on this computer because as we're going to see, they just kind of fit in inside this beautiful Commodore I printed out. So let's cut the parts we don't need. After some pliers and cut and cuts, I finally have only the keys that I wanted. The next step is to glue the missing keys by accident while I was working. I will use the gel glue and then put everything on the undershield cover for the original keyboard, cut just in size to fit on the insides of my new 3D printed Commodore. Since we got a few minutes before the glue on the keyboard gets dry, I decided to reinforce the union on my C64 3D printed parts. And for that I'm gonna use two processes simultaneously. The first one I will put some glue actually in here to hold things in place, while I, I will use some more aggressive union, a uh, Dremel with filament on its tip so the, uh, the friction between the filament and the parts will provide the welding that is very lasting and very reliable. One hour has passed and it is time to put the little silicone springs back in its place. It's not an easy task, it's very tedious and if you accidentally read, hit one key with your finger that spring will fall off and we will try to hold and everyone else will fall off too. So this is a very tedious and careful work. Once I checked the membrane was working, I decided to keep it inside. 
So here comes the final moment to put it all together without losing all the hard work putting that silicone springs in place. It was not, it wasn't easy, but in the end I find out that the center screws on the original keyboard was to hold the keys in place. Once I found that out, I put, I could use the Commodore as a placeholder, put everything as make my sandwich, and then screw things together in place. Finally, an excuse to use that most preferred device from our makers, the hot glue gun. It, it does work very well and makes you look very cool holding it, right? As the hot glue also takes some time to dry, let me introduce to you the designer, to the designer of this beautiful piece. I'm gonna need some keys, the function keys, so I use this Commodore de de uh, design here from Thingiverse. Not only the author create a very well done, well made, perf perfect measured uh, STL file, but he also made a scale full completed body. So what I'm gonna do is download this body I already had, open it on Mesh Mixer, and then I will use the edit feature uh, at first I try to use the plain cut feature and make it several ten thousands cuts but I realized I was wasting my time as you can see it, we have a very bad uh, much better function for that I use the split function so the whole body exploded in very in closed solids after that, I just need to choose from this browsing window what, was, what I was looking for and hiding everything else. Once I found the keys I wanted, I could delete everything else to keep the function keys only. My computer was very slow by this point, 10,000 things running at the same time, but the end here are the four function keys, but I don't want to print for STL, so I will unite it then in a single STL thing file using combine feature. Now, as you can see by the viewer browser, I only have one file, I will export it, but only the keys will not hold things in place. I will need something to put behind it. So it's time to go to Tinkercad. I will import that file in here and in here I will create some bases that will help to keep not only keep the keys in place but also fulfill some empty spaces between that actual keyboard I used and the original space designed on the C64. Time to go to simplify and use my Brazilian 3D, 3D Rise printer to make this beautiful piece. Time to go, time to print. As this was a very flat design, I decided to use the print with hefties, so I can create a large base, I can avoid warping, and also I would like to point out how beautiful and mirrored brightening is coming this PLA filament from 3D Rise out of my printer. Can you see, it is, it is actually reflecting the printer head on its surface. This printer is just remarkable. And this is, sure enough, my final part and time to assemble everything else together. I remove the raft, sure. And now, let's assemble things together. For 
the very last piece in our puzzle, time to finish it up. I will open this 3D printed part, uh, nice to point out that it just clips together, and I will use my keyboard with hot glue as a fixing point, anchor point. I will try to put the base in the between the, the shell of the C64 and the keyboard, and as you can see, it is perfect. It, it just looked that was born to be in there. Actually, it was. This is it! My fully functional keyboard in a shape of a C64. I will have to make some drills behind, but can you see the keys? Can you see the shape? Can you see the 3D print quality? This is remarkable! I just have a fully functional keyboard in a shape of a C64 that is gorgeous. I, I can actually put some Raspberry Pi inside, some Arduino inside, I don't know. Well, let me know what are your thoughts about this design in the comments below. Hit that like button and if you will, subscribe to this channel. This is a brand new thing we're trying to pull out. Hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time.